Greetings everyone, welcome to my channel Anesthesia Explained. Today we will be learning about how anesthesia has turned the agony of surgery into a comfortable, painless experience, revolutionizing the way we approach medical procedures. So let's learn about the history of anesthesia. The word anesthesia is derived from two Greek words. And, which means, without and, esthesis, which means, perception. So it basically means without perception. The word anesthesia was coined by Oliver Wendell Holmes in 1846, shortly after the first public demonstration of surgical anesthesia with ether in Massachusetts General Hospital by his friend Dr. William T. G. Morton. The word was mentioned in the letter to his friend in which he recommended the name anesthesia for the state of insensibility induced by the inhalation of ether, however, long before him. Hippocrates, the father of medicine used the similar word, anesthita, to mean the reversible loss of sensation and unconsciousness. The evolution of anesthesia can be better understood using a timeline of events that occurred in the past. Broadly we could put it into different phases. The foundation, which was before 1846 where advancement in anatomy and surgery demanded the need for better anesthesia more than ever. Establishment, which was a period between 1800 and 1900 where development in chemistry resulted in discovery of general anesthetics. Growth, during which the modern anesthesia developed with improved safety, and present, which we can call a digital era. However this evolution was not a discrete phase in itself and involved improvement based on the past discoveries. These are some of the methods used during early civilization for pain relief. The opium, also called joy plant, was grown in Mesopotamia in 3000 BC and was mainly used for pain relief and euphoria. The plant spread from there to Babylonians and then to Egyptians. Trade through Mediterranean spread the plant to Greeks and Alexander and his armies took it to India and Middle Eastern region where most of the opium at present is grown. Similarly, alcohol was long been used for pleasure and pain relief. Before the introduction of opium by Arabs, cannabis was the main source of drug used in India and China. Egyptians also used some brutal methods like carotid or jugular compression to produce brief period of unconsciousness before circumcision. Acupuncture was a popular method of pain relief in China some 3,000 years ago. The medieval age and renaissance saw development in chemistry and with it, the development of chemicals which had anesthetic properties. Drugs like ether, nitrous oxide, chloroform and cocaine were discovered. Regional anesthesia was also discovered in 1800s. The compound, ether may have been created by Jabir Hayyan. Ramon Lull is credited with discovering ether in 1275 though there is no contemporary evidence of it. In 1525, Paracelsus isolated substance that resulted from the mixture of alcohol and vitriol. He found that the chickens felt asleep with that isolated substance and later awakened unharmed. However he did not extend his observation beyond farm animals. Valerius Cordus is credited with developing the method of synthesizing ether. August Sigmund is credited with giving the name to this substance ether in 1729. The recreational use of ether also took place at organized parties in the 19th century called ether frolics, where guests were encouraged to inhale therapeutic amounts of ether producing a state of excitation. Many notable physicians observed that during these gatherings, people would often experience minor injuries but appear to show no reaction to the injury demonstrating ether's anesthetic effects. The Ether Dome was a surgical operating amphitheater at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. It was the site of the first public demonstration of the use of inhaled ether as a surgical anesthetic on October 16, 1846, otherwise known as Ether Day. Crawford Long, a surgeon in Georgia, had previously administered sulfuric ether in 1842, but this went unpublished until 1849. The ether dome event occurred when William T. G. Morton, a local dentist, used ether to anesthetize a patient for painlessly removing a tumor from his neck. There was a failed demonstration in the same theater by Horace Wells with nitrous oxide the previous year. To commemorate the day of this successful ether anesthesia, we mark October 16 as World Anesthesia Day every year.
Joseph Priestley's discovery of nitrous oxide was recorded in 1772. Humphrey Davy experimented with nitrous oxide inhalation, conducting many experiments on himself. Aside from its analgesic effects, Davy observed that patients who had inhaled nitrous oxide showed a state of euphoria. He proposed the term laughing gas and started to demonstrate its effects at meetings with his friends. Nevertheless, this potential application did not reach the surgical profession for the next 40 years. In both America and England, the compound was used as a party drug. It was only in December 1844 that dental surgeon Horace Wells considered the possibility of using the compound for painless tooth extraction. After several successful experiments in his private practice, Wells decided to give a public demonstration at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. However, his demonstration was a failure. It took another two decades before Colton revived the use of nitrous oxide in USA and later demonstrated nitrous oxide anesthesia at the 1867 International Exhibition in Paris. Since then, nitrous oxide has been widely used in mixture with oxygen in dentistry and labor analgesia with less side effects. Many individuals has been credited with discovering chloroform. Here are some notable ones, Samuel Guthrie, a U.S. physician appears to have produced chloroform in 1831 by reacting chlorinated lime with ethanol, as well as noting its anesthetic properties, he also believed that he had prepared ether however. Eugene Suberin obtained the compound by the action of chlorine bleach on both ethanol and acetone. Justice von Liebig carried out the alkaline cleavage of chloral which he incorrectly names it as carbon chloride. The first narcosis with chloroform was performed by James Young Simpson on himself on November 4, 1847. His legendary self-experimentation began when he learned about Morton's introduction of ether as an anesthetic. After dinner every night, Simpson and his two assistants had the habit of experimenting with various chemicals to see if they had any anesthetic effect. Chloroform was a winner. Within days, Simpson had used it to perform minor surgeries, and for labor analgesia using chloroform-soaked handkerchief on patient's mouth. The Church of England preached against the use of anesthetics for relief of pain in obstetric patients that time. Chloroform gained immense popularity only after it was administered to Queen Victoria by John Snow during the birth of Prince Leopold in 1853. For the record, John Snow is considered to be the father of modern epidemiology for his efforts to determine how cholera was spread and for the statistical mapping methods he initiated in London. Since then, chloroform was extensively used in the Crimean, Punjab and American civil wars. It saved thousands of soldiers from suffering extreme surgical ordeals. Chloroform was also used to treat asthma and cholera, as a rather dubious cure for gonorrhea and as a sweetener in medicines. However, the price of this anesthesia was many sudden, inexplicable deaths under surgery, which caused years of passionate controversy. On an even more sinister note, chloroform featured in thefts, rapes and murder. Coca is one of the oldest, most potent and most dangerous stimulants of natural origin. 3,000 years before the birth of Christ, ancient Incas in the Andes chewed coca leaves to get their hearts racing and to speed their breathing to counter the effects of living in thin mountain air. Native Peruvians chewed coca leaves only during religious ceremonies. When Spanish soldiers invaded Peru in 1532, they kept Indian laborers in Spanish silver mines supplied with coca leaves because it made them easier to control and exploit. Cocaine was first extracted from coca leaves in 1859 by German chemist Albert Niemann. Austrian psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, who used the drug himself, was the first to broadly promote cocaine as a tonic to cure depression and sexual impotence. The popularity of the drug got a further boost when coca leaves was included as an ingredient in the soft drink, Coca-Cola. The euphoric and energizing effects on the consumer helped to skyrocket the popularity of Coca-Cola by the turn of the century. From the 1850s to the early 1900s, cocaine and opium-laced elixirs, tonics and wines were broadly used by people of all social classes. The drug became popular in the silent film industry and the pro-cocaine messages coming out of Hollywood at that time influenced millions.
Modern-day local anesthesia began in 1884 with a discovery by a young ophthalmologist, colleague of Sigmund Freud named Carl Kohler, who placed a 2% cocaine solution on his own eyes, thus producing insensibility. Prior to this discovery, he had tested solutions such as morphine as anesthetics in the eyes of laboratory animals without success. Later, cocaine was also used as a local anesthetic in other medical fields such as dentistry. On August 24, 1898, August Beer and his assistant undertook experiments on their own bodies which were part of their historic initial investigations of spinal anesthesia using cocaine. Beer's description of these experiments is notable for the manner in which he documented the lack of sensibility after injection of cocaine, which included a burning cigar, a strong blow to the shin with an iron hammer, and strong pressure and traction on the testicles, none of which provoked pain. For his achievement, he is considered the father of spinal anesthesia. 19th century saw the development of regional anesthesia which included spinal, epidural, and regional blocks. We will discuss them briefly. J. Leonard Corning, a New York neurologist, was apparently the first individual to conceive of the idea of spinal anesthesia. In 1885, whilst investigating the effects of cocaine on the peripheral nervous system in a dog, Corning injected the drug between two lumbar spinous processes with the intention that the cocaine would be transported along communicating blood vessels to the spinal cord itself. He then performed a similar injection between the T1112 vertebrae of a male patient with ejaculatory problems, causing temporary leg weakness. Fortunately, the patient survived the life-threatening dose of medication. Further spinal injections in other patients with neurological disorders led Corning to coin the term spinal anesthesia. He developed a spinal needle made of gold, with a sharp, short beveled needle tip and a short introducer. Advances in needle design, coupled with the emergence of new local anesthetic agents, have been key to the development of this technique over the years. The next major development took place six years later when Heinrich Irenaeus Quink performed the first lumbar punctures to reduce raised intracranial pressure in patients with meningitis. In 1898, August Beer performed what can be considered the first true spinal anesthesia in humans using Quink's technique with much lesser dose of drug than used by Corning. The patient in question needed an operation to resect a tuberculous ankle joint. In 1901, the first epidural anesthesia via a caudal approach was independently described by two Frenchmen Fernand Cathlin and his colleague. The Spanish military surgeon, Fidel Pages, completed the lumbar approach successfully in 1921. Fidel Pages created the technique to treat wounded soldiers in severe pain. In 1949 the first successful continuous lumbar epidural anesthesia was reported by Manuel Martinez Curbelo. Following the usage of cocaine in ophthalmology by Dr. Carl Kohler, Halstead and Hall in the 1880s used a cocaine injection that produced a sensory block in the ulnar, musculocutaneous, supratrochlear and infraorbital regions kick starting the development of nerve blocks. Since then, as a result of new breakthroughs in devices for peripheral nerve localization like nerve stimulator and ultrasound, newer local anesthetics and better block needles, nerve blocks gained popularity. The American Society of Regional Anesthesia was officially refounded in 1975 after earlier group of the same name was founded in 1923. The 20th century saw the transformation of the practices of general anesthesia both on the procedural and the drugs being used. The safety and efficacy were of anesthesia thus improved with the routine use of tracheal intubation and anesthetic agents with improved characteristics. The digital revolution of the 21st century has brought newer technology to the art and science of anesthesia. The anesthesiologist has so much more to learn than there ever was. Anesthesia extends far beyond operation theater and involves pain and palliative care, resuscitation, intensive care medicine, disaster response and hyperbaric medicine. 